And good morning, everybody. Welcome to a special episode of Environmental Social Justice. Today, we have a special guest, Jackie Birdsall from Toyota. She is the Senior Engineering Manager of Toyota. You have worked on the Mirai. You have worked on both generations of Mirai, if I recall correctly. That's and correct. also, most importantly, people don't realize this about Toyota. First one to mass produce the hybrid vehicle. They still produce hybrids. They do all electric. And today's topic is going to talk about hydrogen fuel cells or hydrogen vehicles. So Jackie, please tell us everything that Toyota is working on and how amazing this is. <laughs> wow, that's a, quite an intro. Well, thank you so much, Wendy, for having me in. And thank you to everyone who's joining in to learn a bit more about uh, what Toyota is doing in the electrification space. So, you know, you had a great intro there um, talking a bit about our portfolio approach. And so that's actually part of um, what Toyota calls Environmental Challenge 2050, which is by 2050, we have a goal to reduce our CO2 emissions of our fleet by 90% compared with our 2010 levels. And so in order to get there, that's sorry, that's just one of the many challenges <laughs> that we're looking at for, um, you know, to reduce our negative impact on the planet. But looking specifically at the vehicle fleet, what that means is electrification, right? That's the only way to get to that decarbonization goal. And so for us, we've taken an approach that we call the portfolio of solutions. And that includes, you know, plug-in hybrid, hybrid electric, battery electric, and fuel cell electric. And then giving the customer the opportunity to choose the solution that best fits their lifestyle. So that's kind of the background of, of you know, this portfolio that you just mentioned that we have of, of different electrification options that we're giving to the customer. And so then when we talk about hydrogen and fuel cells, fuel cells specifically, which, you know, you said is, is, is my background. I've actually uh, been working on hydrogen and fuel cell technology for 18 years now. Okay. And, um, you know, the first kind of comment is that it is electric. I think a lot of people think that we're burning the hydrogen, which is not the case. All we're doing is we're combining the hydrogen in the vehicle with the oxygen from the air, just from the atmosphere. The two create water, that water goes out a tailpipe and byproduct of the, that reaction is the electricity, which drives the electric motor. So you have the same driving experience, driving a, a fuel cell electric vehicle as you do a battery electric vehicle. And then in that silent, you have that great response to the electric motor. It really is a superior driving performance or a driving experience. The only difference is that instead of plugging it in and recharging it, you refill it with hydrogen. And that takes about five minutes or less at a hydrogen fueling station. And you can go to CaliforniaFuelCellPartnership.org, which is CAF.org slash stations and see what stations are available. They are mostly available in California and the US, um, but the Mirai is a global vehicle. We also sell it in Japan and in Europe and in uh, several other places. So <laughs> that's kind of a, a bit of a background for you. I do have to add the Mirai is a beautiful vehicle. I got to see it in person. It is, it is a well-made, beautiful car. And one thing, just to just to back up to the charge, uh, the refueling, mm -hmm. most people don't realize that it is only a five-minute refueling for a tank of hydrogen in opposition to electricity, which depending on the charge you have access to, it could take anywhere from 30, 40 minutes to a few hours. So That's depending right. on what the person needs, what their capabilities are, what they want, Mm -hmm. These are two options. You're giving them their choice. So That's exactly right. Some customers may never want to see a station again. They just want yeah. to charge their vehicle at home. Absolutely. Some customers like me, you know, live in apartments or move often or just don't <laughs> have a capability to plug in my car at home. So I live, but I live down the street from a hydrogen station. So I just drive mm -hmm. down there and refill. So it's not up to us to disguise and to, and to tell our customers what they should be driving, right? It's up to us to give them the options to decarbonize their driving and give them access to the mobility they need to pursue whatever their life goals are. Oh my God, that, I could not have said that better myself because so many people, <laughs> I mean, especially people who are trying to wean off of fossil fuels and who don't understand the whole net zero concept. Getting off of fossil fuels or petroleum is, is a challenge for some people. They don't understand it. They don't want to be bothered with it. They don't want to be inconvenienced. This is almost the same as filling up with, with gasoline. I mean, you go into a station, you fill up your tank. It takes almost the same amount of time and you're well on your way. And what's the, the Mirai has a range of, I think, 400 miles. 402 miles is the EPA range on the second generation Mirai. Yep. First generation was 312, but we've made some improvements as we always do between our generations. And yeah, now we've gotten a longer range. So now there's really no difference even with, you know, 
the carbon free vehicle and the petroleum car, because both are going to have that range. I mean, actually, some petroleum cars are less than 400, if I remember correctly. Um, so that is actually a vast improvement that most people wouldn't quite understand. And again, I'm not putting down electric. I think electric is wonderful. I think there's room for both. And as you said, it's up to the customer to decide who gets what. <laughs> we can't force people to do things. Um, but going back to Toyota as you know corporation, any future steps that you could share or developments that you guys are going on? I know the Olympics was huge for you guys. You, I understand you took people around in the Mirai, had them experience driving in that. The Olympic torch was actually lit with hydrogen, first mm -hmm. time ever. So there's a lot of developments going on that I don't think everyone is fully aware of. There is. And um, it's it's been so exciting to be a part of it because, again, I've I'm coming up on two decades now in this and to see how far we've advanced is really is really incredible. And what we're seeing lately, um, the kind of mega trends, as it were, around hydrogen are, are first the understanding of the scalability of fuel cell stacks, because that is one of the beauty of the beauties of hydrogen and fuel cell technology is that, you know, fuel cell itself can be small enough to power, you know, a cell phone or large enough to power a building or anything in between. And all you do is add in more fuel cells to create the fuel cell stack to put out the power. The energy is stored in the hydrogen. So in the battery, these are both one in the same, right? And hydrogen and fuel cell, they're separate. And hydrogen has a higher energy density by weight than batteries, which means we can store more energy in the hydrogen than we can in a battery for an equivalent weight, right? Oh. So if we scale up to larger applications like buses and trucks and locomotives and stationary applications, that's really where hydrogen starts to become attractive. And that's why, you know, we're targeting our larger sedan or longer range vehicle for light duty as well, because, you know, we see that as being the area where, where hydrogen and fuel cells can really fit the niche. So what we've done here at Toyota is actually back in uh, 2017, we took two fuel cell stacks out of our light duty Mirai vehicle. We put it into a class eight semi and we demonstrated that we could pull 80,000 pounds of goods with just two fuel cell stacks from the exact same Mirai and uh, kind of showed that to, uh, to, to the public and to our own internal stakeholders and to our management and got everybody excited with this kind of skunk work projects that happened here in Los Angeles. And uh, now we have 10 of these trucks and they're operating around the ports of Long Beach, which means we've taken 10 diesel semis off the road already in the port of LA. And, and you can imagine the impact of that. There's 16,000 diesel semis that go in and out of that port oh, wow. every single day. If we can replace those all with hydrogen fuel cell, um, it's, it's really spectacular. And these trucks go 300 miles and take 15 minutes to fill. So it's really, um, you know, back to your your, your point of, of being able to uh, replace conventional technology. This is really where we're starting to see some advantages here. So the move towards, you know, beyond the light duty market is kind of the first trend we're seeing right now um, with hydrogen. And then the second is that utilities, we're all trying to, you know, move towards a green grid, right? We're trying to figure out how we make a sustainable, uh, you know, renewable grid. And that means you're going to have to have energy storage yeah. because you can't just, you know, use the intermittents when they're available, right? You can't, you, can, you can't always trust on the wind to blow and the sun to shine. And mm -hmm. hydrogen again, is an excellent energy storage mechanism. So we're seeing all of these new companies start to really be invested in, and interested in green hydrogen. So we have a lot of hydrogen um, coming down the pipeline available to us. And then that benefits our customers because, you know, right now today, our customers can go and look at their local station and see how renewable it is. We have some stations that are 100% renewable. We have other stations that are 33% renewable and they can choose, do I want to fully decarbonize my driving experience or, you know, am I okay with decarbonizing it enough, you know, with 33% renewable? So ultimately the goal to your point is to move away from fossil and, and decarbonize the sector. That is brilliant. I mean, I love the fact of the scaling up because one thing this industry needs is the um, infrastructure needs to improve. We That's need right. to start, you know, everything needs to change and change is hard. And once we get funding, then that will happen more rapidly. But getting the semis and the diesel, um, next thing that comes to my mind is is uh, freight trains. Are, is there any productivity in that? Because I believe those still use diesel as well. They do as well. Yeah. And that's that's certainly an option, something we're looking into. I mean, we're seeing 
megawatts of scale of fuel cells being available. So, you know, a diesel locomotive, you're looking at three megawatts, and that's already been something that's been demonstrated with fuel cell technology. So there's no reason why, <laughs> why we can't. It's just a matter of uh, making sure, to your point, that there is sufficient funding and engineering power behind it, right? And it's getting there. I've talked to enough people. We've got a, you've got a lot of people rooting for this. <laughs> <laughs> I think, well, I mean, we need it. I mean, I, again, big fan of, of electricity and electric vehicles, but we need diversification. We do. And energy diversification, you know, we can't be relying on just one sole source. We have to have multiple options. And this is a, you know, I love the fact that you guys offer every type, every brand, every source, let the person choose what works for them. So um, just on a last note, if there was one piece of information you could leave with somebody to say, you know, for me, I love the fact that the off gas of a hydrogen car is water. Mm -hmm. People don't realize that what comes out of the tailpipe is water, mm -hmm. and which we need. <laughs> but what's the one thing you'd like to leave someone with to learn about hydrogen, to not be afraid of it, and to try to embrace it? Oh man, um, I think you know. First of all, you 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 said it perfectly. You know, this is this is something we have to do. Yeah. It's it's no longer you know. Oh, nice to do. If we have R and D money, we'll throw it this way. We're starting to really see the impact of um, of climate change. Yeah. You know, and and I think people are are more accepting of that now than they ever have been before because it's in our face and it's in our daily lives now. And so I think that there's a new kind of, of call to action of all hands on deck. And to your point, it can't just be it just can't be one technology or the other. It needs to be both battery electric and fuel cell electric. We need both hydrogen and you know wind and solar electricity generation it's a, a com it's a combination of both that's really going to get us to the place where we have the renew renewable and sustainable resources that we need to to go forward in a way that um that ultimately won't uh, negatively impact the planet anymore very true we have we have to stop negatively impacting the planet we've done <laughs> enough damage over the last few centuries about infrastructure we're, we're battling against you know a century old infrastructure here they've had a hundred years to build this infrastructure and to develop yes. all the codes and standards and regulations around it and it's so established that it it, it takes it takes a huge effort to to change that it does but i you know i believe that you guys are going to do it because what you guys are doing is amazing we can't do it alone. <laughs> we can't do it alone, and that's why people out there check out the Mirai, check out um, Toyota, see what they're up to. They're doing great things. I mean, it's amazing what you guys are doing, and hopefully, once lockdown is kind of lifted and we're allowed to go outside and really interact with people again, please check out their showcase rooms. I know that you guys, um, you're based south of the Long Beach area, correct? Uh, our R and D office is in Gardena. Which is north north of Long Beach, yeah. North of Long. Okay, I got that one wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Cool. But, but yeah, ours is ours is R and D, so we don't really allow people in. But please, no, if yeah. you're a local Mirai dealer, you can go to Toyota.com/slash Mirai, find the local dealership. They have them on the lot. They'll happily walk you around. You know, let you test drive. So please, yeah, go and 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 take one for a drive yourself. Yes, check it out. They're a beautiful car, and they're silent, and they're just they're lovely. Nice yeah. smooth ride. A friend of mine has one. <laughs> I'm extremely jealous. You can tell I'm jealous. So, <laughs> thank you so much. This has been a wonderful interview. And by all means, people check out what these guys are doing. Highly recommend it. <laughs> thank you, Wendy. Thank you. You guys take care.